Reports state axed NBA guard Joshua Primo exposed himself to women multiple times, plus Spurs settled lawsuit with former team psychologist over Joshua Primo misconduct allegations. If you haven't been keeping up to date with all things NBA, then prepare yourself. According to recent reports, the young Spurs player Joshua Primo has abruptly been dismissed by the San Antonio Spurs due to him repeatedly exposing himself to women. Yes, you heard that correctly. And the crazy part is, he is only 19 years old. His NBA career was truly just beginning. Primo, who was selected number 12 overall in the 2021 NBA draft, was fired by the Spurs despite them having just picked up his $4.3 million US 2023-2024 option. So what exactly happened? Did Primo deserve to be let go indefinitely? Will he ever play in the NBA again? Let's take a look. First up, the Spurs' Joshua Primo has allegedly been cut from the team. Why? Well, here's all the need-to-know details. Disturbingly, there have been several reported occasions of player Joshua Primo exposing himself to women, which has ultimately led to the San Antonio Spurs releasing him. Now, Primo was the number 12 pick back in the 2021 NBA draft. The abrupt and startling decision to release the young 19-year-old NBA player on Friday night was indicative of the seriousness of the problems around him. Primo's 4.3 million 2023-2024 option was just agreed upon by the organization, demonstrating their trust in Primo's future with the squad. Additionally, on Saturday, Tony Busby, an attorney, informed online sources that he had been hired by a lady who worked for the Spurs and said that Primo had exposed himself to her. This case is very similar to the Watson case. It is misconduct claims brought against quarterback Deshaun Watson of the Cleveland Browns, Busby represented several women who had also claimed to be taken advantage of. Now, despite these damning allegations, numerous NBA teams are still interested in Primo's talent and potential. Still, they are seeking a fuller grasp of the circumstances as they consider whether to submit a claim to sign him before he clears his waivers and officially becomes a free agent. A team would need the available cap space or a traded player exception big enough to cover Primo's $4.1 million salary this year to sign him. It would also be obligated to pay him the $4.3 million remaining on his 2023-2024 deal. Primo accepted the need to continue mental health treatment more fully in a statement to ESPN. Primo added in the statement, I know that you all are surprised by today's announcement. He then went on to explain that he has been looking for assistance to deal with the trauma he has experienced in the past and that he will use this opportunity to devote greater attention to the overall care of his mental well-being. He participated in the Spurs' first four games of the season, coming off the bench to average seven points. Speaking of Primo and the Spurs. The NBA team has recently settled a lawsuit over the misconduct. Here's exactly what happened. A civil case that a sports psychologist employed by the NBA's San Antonio Spurs had recently brought against the team and former Spurs player Joshua Primo has recently been settled. The lawsuit came after Primo allegedly exposed himself to Dr. Calthan during therapy sessions starting in December 2021, according to the lawsuit filed on November 3rd. It also claimed the organization's leadership disregarded her many concerns about Primo's improper conduct. Following this revelation, Primo refuted the charges. However, William Briggs II, Primo's attorney, declined to comment on all the allegations that have surfaced, which leads many to believe they are in fact true. In a statement released just last week, the Spurs CEO, R.C. Buford, stated that the situation with Josh Primo is a matter that the team is taking very seriously. He also stated that they have taken and are continuing to take steps to ensure that all persons concerned are treated with respect and decency since learning of the allegations. They are also aware of their debt to Dr. Calthan, their team, their employees, and their community. He then elaborated, claiming that as a company, the Spurs are always reviewing and improving their overall procedures to ensure that they, in the end, represent the culture and values of who they strive to be. He then stated that they are trying their very best to enhance their working practices. Now, whether anything actually changes remains to be seen, but we hope for other female professionals working with the team that they do. Buford said in a statement to many media sites, including ESPN, at the time the case was filed, we disagree with the accuracy of facts, details, and time frame. Furthermore, when Calton's contract was available for renewal in August, she claimed that the Spurs neglected to renew it. On October 28th, Primo was let go from the team. At the time, without going into specifics, Buford said that the roster change would serve the best interest of both the club and Joshua. What do you think about all this? Do you think it was fair that they let Dr. Calton go? What will happen to Primo following this? Will it impact his future career? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. In other NBA news, after admitting his association 
threatened with a certain anti-Semitic movie, Kyrie Irving will rejoin the Nets. So does that mean he finally apologized? Simply put, yes. After apologizing for his association with an anti-Semitic movie, Kyrie Irving will be allowed to rejoin the Brooklyn Nets and end his suspension. Irving first sparked a debate by tweeting a reference to the movie Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America. According to a book that served as the basis for the documentary, several high-ranking Jews have reported to worshiping Satan and Lucifer. The director of the movie denies the existence of the Holocaust and uses a fictitious remark from Adolf Hitler to advance an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Now, Irving at first refused to accept responsibility for his actions and dodged questions about whether he had anti-Semitic views. As a result, the seven-time All-Star was suspended by the Nets for failing to denounce hatred. However, it seems as though he has turned a corner. Recently, Irving was more remorseful. In an interview with SNY, Irving affirmed, I'm not anti-Semitic. He continued, I never have been. I don't have hate in my heart for the Jewish people or anyone that identifies as a Jew. I'm not anti-Jewish or any of that. The 30-year-old went on to say, I just want to apologize deeply for all my actions for the time that it's been since the post was first put up. I've had a lot of time to think, but my focus initially, if I could do it over, would be to heal and repair a lot of my close relationships with my Jewish relatives, brothers, and sisters. Now, this coming Sunday, the Nets take on the Memphis Grizzlies. Since Irving was put on the bench, the club had a 5-3 record, but hopefully with him back on the court and the suspension lifted, the Nets can continue to dominate even more. Now in more upbeat NBA news, Ben Simmons finally shows he's back after recording his first double-double in more than 600 days. Ben Simmons easily had his greatest performance while wearing a Brooklyn Nets uniform, showing evidence that his all-star level of play might officially be back. Despite having a difficult start to the 2022-23 season, Simmons silenced his haters last Friday by defeating the Portland Trailblazers. Royce O'Neal's tip-in with 0.7 seconds left helped the Nets win 109-107, and Kevin Durant praised Simmons for his overall performance. Although Durant led the way with 35 points, Simmons' performance of 13 rebounds, 15 points, and 7 assists captured everyone's attention. Following the game, Durant praised Simmons, saying he was incredible tonight. After nine games without scoring more than 10 points, Simmons made it two in a row with an 11-point performance against the Sacramento Kings. The double-double is Simmons' first in more than 600 days, and the NBA community praised him highly for his amazing performance. Kenny Smith, a former NBA player turned analyst, wrote, Gotta say it, Ben Simmons has made progress, looking like the old Ben. Now, this is something we haven't heard in a while. Is Simmons being praised for his performance? Over the past year and more, it has been the opposite, with many questioning if he deserved to be in the NBA. Now, many people believe that Simmons was scared of going into the paint and getting fouled, which prompted concerns about the mental component of his game. He didn't avoid contact against the Blazers and delivered from the free throw line when his team most needed him. In the last minutes, he converted three out of his four free throw attempts, an area where he has always struggled. But it seems like he is on the rise, thankfully. The crucial win moves the Nets up to 7-9 and nine on the year and into 11th place in the Eastern Conference. Jacques Vaughn, the coach of the Nets, was ecstatic with his team's performance, but even more so with Simmons. Even the new coach Vaughn remarked, it's very encouraging. We just hope Simmons can keep this kind of performance up, and if so, he will be back to the old Ben Simmons in no time. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we have for today, so make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and as always, thanks for watching.